I'd like to go over some of the main lessons I've learned from uh, playing with this device. And uh, mainly it's uh, understanding that the magnetic currents do have a capacitive nature to them. In other words, this device here is a flux capacitor. Uh, it sounds kind of weird, but I've proven that multiple times. You apply an input pulse, you get a current to flow, turn the switch off, you get a flyback effect, but you have not received all of that flyback effect. The core is still holding uh, that magnetic current in it. It's capacitively magnetically stored within the core and to get it out you have to rip the you have to break the core or apply an opposite polarity of pulse. Um, so it goes to show that every closed loop flux path core like this E-core or a toroidal core will operate the same um, when we're talking about applying DC pulses to it, uh, which which operates very different from this open flux core, uh, such as what's used in Bedini applications, and you'll find uh, this is much more efficient when uh, harnessing the flyback effect. Whereas these and this, with the closed loop flux path, are much more efficient harnessing the input pulse, not so much the flyback. And uh, these cores, which I'm particularly interested in, are flyback transformer cores. And uh, these are very similar to the closed loop flux path. Actually, they're kind of a mix between the open loop and the closed loop in that when you break them apart, you'll see, there it is, that's a plastic spacer. Okay, so what that does is that doesn't allow the core to completely close. It's got a gap. And so what you can do is tune this with the gap. And that way you can efficiently use the input pulse and the flyback pulse. You can also, you can do that with uh, these closed loop flux paths. But, and uh, in order to tune them you have to use magnets, which is pretty interesting. Um, so now I'll go and try to demonstrate some of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so I've changed the setup around a little bit. I'd like to explain that. Um, we're running off this 12 volt battery and that's going through this pulse width modulator 555 circuit and that is running through my digital multimeter to show the amp draw and going into the device so I'm basically um, pulsing DC into this device and I can change the frequency and pulse width I got these labeled so you can see the green one is going to be the flyback and the red LED is going to be the input. So you remember this is my input coil and this coil is acting just like a transformer. This is what's feeding these LEDs. Uh, for the first experiment I'm going to be making this behave like a open core, uh, like a Bedini coil. And to do that all, all I gotta do is take this bar off and that opens up the core and we'll turn it on and we'll observe what happens. You can see the only thing that's being efficiently transferred here is the flyback. We can't see any input current being transferred. Um, now we'll switch over to a more of a closed loop, like a toroid. And to do that, I'll just put this right back on. And now you see just the opposite. The input's the only thing efficiently being transferred. You don't see any flyback at all. Um, now I'll go to the uh, flyback core. Let me set that up here. Okay, to do this, all I'm doing is adding pieces of paper until I get to the right amount of thickness that it operates correctly. And I'll show you that. There you go. Now you see both lights coming on. Now with the standard closed loop type of core, like this without the pieces of paper, you can adjust this by using frequency, but I found it's not nearly as efficient. I'll demonstrate that. See we're drawing 18, 19 milliamps there, 24, 23 milliamps there. I'll use frequency to change that over. There we're back at about the same light intensity it was before when this was off, but now we're drawing 158 milliamps. 
All right, now I'm going to demonstrate the closed loop flux core uh, and adjusting it to switch over to the flyback effect while maintaining the efficiency. And you do that with magnets. And this particular setup requires a lot of very strong magnets to do this for this particular setup. And there you go. Now we're at uh, oh, 50, 50 milliamps. So it's not quite as efficient as just taking the thing off, but you can tune it with magnets. You can also use magnets to fine tune it to that sort of gray area in between to where you can get both the input and the output. And to do this I'm using not quite as strong of magnets as I was in the last demo. You can start to see the flyback coming out. It's coming out more. And there, now they're about even, and we're still maintaining our efficiency. Okay, so I want you to be aware, whenever you spread this gap farther, what's actually happening is that you're making the inductance go lower. Um, and the same thing applies to whenever you put a magnet on a closed loop flux path, you make the inductance go smaller, add more magnets, it goes smaller yet. Um, so that's what you're doing. Uh, so I hope you find this informative in being able to choose your core correctly depending on what you're trying to go for as well as your tuning applications and I'm not uh, going to say at this point which technique is the most efficient because I don't know yet it probably depends on what you're doing with it um, and keep in mind that all of the the information I've gone over only applies to pulsing DC into these coils it does not apply to pulsing AC